Uh, drive as straight as possible. Speed. Do you know the speed what we what we spoke about? 95 kilometers. 95 kilometers, yeah. And without any speaking during the whole ride, yeah? One hour. Okay. Yeah? What we are trying okay. to do here is to assess the effects of medicinal drugs or drugs of, of abuse on uh, driving performance. Drugs and driving research by itself is not unique, but we are unique in a sense that we use an on-the-road driving test to measure drug effects. That is something uh, special that only occurs here in the Netherlands. We have subjects who we invite to participate in what we call clinical drug trials. We treat them with med medicinal drugs or sometimes we even administer drugs of abuse and ask them to operate the vehicle and drive on a primary highway for one hour and drive as straight as possible. One of the tubes uh, uh, stores the camera and the other one uh, stores an infrared uh, camera. And the cameras basically register the position of the car relative to the white middle line. That is what we call the lateral position. And from these data, we can then calculate the weaving motion over time, so during a one-hour driving test. We call it the vigilance test because the subject is seated behind the wheel, but is not allowed to talk to the driving instructor. He or she is not allowed to listen to music. There is no chewing gum. Uh, the, the, the windows stay closed. So it's, it's a boring task. Even if people have not taken any drugs, or medicinal drugs, and if people have uh, taken a drug that also causes uh, uh, a sedation or sleepiness, then you will see that the weaving motion increases even more. And what is typical about these studies is that we uh, that subjects enter in what we call a placebo control study. So they not only drive the vehicle while under the influence of a drug, but they also drive the vehicle while under the influence of a placebo. And these two treatment conditions we can use to compare with each other and define the magnitude of the drug effect. And these effects that we measure with drugs, we then later on compare to the effects of alcohol so that we can actually indicate the magnitude of a drug effect in terms of alcohol effects. And that helps us to interpret the result and to explain the clinical relevance of a given effect. Yeah, what, what we have shown many, many times is that this method is very sensitive to the impairing effects of, uh, of drugs. These results help us to set up classification warning systems. And many of these systems, or many countries in Europe, have already adopted those uh, classification systems right now. now. A good example would be, I think, uh, the cannabis research that we have been doing over the past uh, 15 years. And so, just as with alcohol, it would be possible to define uh, a limit of impairment for cannabis. Many countries have looked at those data, adopted our proposals, and several countries, including the Netherlands, have now laws in preparation to introduce such a limit for cannabis and other drugs of abuse. <laughs>